Okay, so this is our case three, part two. So picking back on stuff, so what have we found before? What did we find in the last sort of video? That b squared minus 4ac was less than zero. We said that r would be complex, two complex conjugates. So alpha plus or minus beta i. And then the homogeneous solution would be c1 e to the alpha t cosine beta t plus c2 e to the alpha t sine beta t. Okay, um, just, to, just to hint on something I didn't hint on last time. Uh, we'd use the alpha plus beta i to come up with these two guys. If we'd use the alpha minus beta i, we would have the same two, two solutions, actually. Um, it, instead, instead of saying uh, u of t plus i v of t, it would be u of t minus i v of t. But u, and, u of t and v of t would still be the two real valued solutions. Okay? So that's why we didn't look at that. Now, uh, my claim now, or I guess I should say a theorem, that's what I've said before. So the last thing I need to show before we believe all this is that... Um, the set of e to the alpha t cosine beta t and e to the alpha t sine beta t are linearly independent. Okay, and our proof is going to be based on the Ronskian yet once again, so this is going to take a little bit of space here. Okay, so this is my proof. All right, so we're going to look at the Ron scan here of e to the alpha t cosine beta t and e to the alpha t sine beta t. So let's see if I can fit all this in on this sheet of paper. It's always a challenge. All right, so I'm going to write I'm going to write this kind of in the middle e to the alpha t cosine beta t, and then over here e to the alpha t sine beta t. Okay, and I probably need to recenter it there. Okay, and underneath I need to take the derivatives. Now, when I'm taking the derivatives, I've got product rule with both of these two guys. So, I'm going to have alpha e to the alpha t cosine beta t. That's taking the derivative of e to the alpha t. And then minus beta e to the alpha t sine beta t. That's taking the derivative of cosine of beta t. And here I'm going to have e to the alpha t uh, sorry, alpha e to the alpha t sine beta t plus beta e to the alpha t cosine beta t. Oh, look at that. I tried to make it fit, and it looks like it just barely does. Okay, so here, let me, there's an imaginary kind of line there that separates those two guys. Okay, so when I multiply this out, it turns into a big, giant mess. But look, it's got sines and cosines in it. So first of all, you know, something's going to cancel. And second off, you know, there's going to be a Pythagorean identity in, some, in there somewhere that's going to make everything turn out nice. Okay, so I'm going to write this over in the corner, and I'll, and I'll move things so you can see it. So this guy times both of those is going to be alpha e to the 2 alpha t, and then cosine beta t, sine beta t, okay, plus beta e to the 2 alpha t, and I've got cosine beta t squared minus, okay, so that's the first part, okay, and I guess I'm, I'm going to write it down underneath it so you can sort of see everything. So minus, in here, let me put the minus sign down here. So minus this guy times this, this guy times this, that times that, and I'm going to have alpha e to the 2 alpha t cos beta t sine beta t and then I've got minus that times minus that which is actually plus okay get this where we can see it so plus beta e to the 2 alpha t sine squared beta t alright so just as promised look at what cancels so that guy cancels with that. Uh, notice the things that I have in common there, so I'll factor them out. So I have a beta e to the 2 alpha t in common, and then times cosine squared beta t plus sine squared beta t. Okay, remember the, the goal with the looking at the Ronskin is to show that it can't be equal to zero. So, um, so all that is equal to 1. That's the Pythagorean identity. And then looking over here, that gives me that I have beta e to the 2 alpha t. Well, we know 
exponential functions can't be zero. All right, and here's, here's the thing. So if we're assuming that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, what are we guaranteed um, for, for the value of r up here? What are we guaranteed? Well, we know it's going to be complex. So uh, it could be purely imaginary, or it, it could be have a real part two. So a could be zero, but if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, beta cannot be zero. So beta has to be a, some kind of number that makes it so that we have complex roots. So back down to here, uh, e to the two al alpha t can't be equal to zero, and beta also can't be equal to zero. So that means those guys are linearly independent, so that means that is going to be my uh, homogeneous solution. So, an example. Solve y double prime minus 4y prime plus 5y equals 0. Got to love those Gaussian integers. Okay, so, oops, kicked my camera. All right, so what's the deal here? Um, so we need the characteristic equation. So r squared minus 4r plus 5 equal to 0. And just be careful with these, because sometimes people get these factoring when they don't. So factors of 5 that add up to 4, that's not happening. 1 and 5 are the factors of 5 that add up to 6. So we know that we need the quadratic formula. So minus b is going to be 4. Plus or minus minus b, or just b squared, is going to be 16. Minus 4 times 5 times 1, so minus 20. All over 2 times a, which is 2. So that's 4 plus or minus, and then I get root negative 4 over 2, okay? And that is 4 plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2, the negative makes an i, and then you have to divide both by 2, so that gives me that r equals 2 plus or minus i. Okay, so it's, it's good to sort of talk about what's going on here. What's the alpha and what's the beta? The beta it does not include the i, okay? So alpha is 2, beta is the coefficient of i, which is 1, okay? Beta is never equal to something with an i, and it's always the coefficient. So my homogeneous equation, or homogeneous general solution, is going to be c1 e to the 2t cos t, plus c2 e to the 2t sine t, and then we're done with that general solution. It's time to go on to another problem. And if it's, if it's an IVP, of course, it gets a little bit more complicated because you have to do product rule on both of those. Um, if, if alpha equals 0, um, there's no exponential part because it's e to the 0 t, that's 1, uh, but you still have a cosine and a sine, and that's going to be uh, important for later when we talk about undamped, uh, free undamped motion. Okay, that's it for case 3. You can now attempt some problems.